Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service for the 17th of May. Today we're thinking about the promise of Jesus that he will never leave us without help or alone, but he will give us the gift of the spirit of truth and peace to dwell with us always. In this promise we celebrate that God is with us wherever we are and can comfort us and help us in whatever situation we face. This is a promise that we're very much in need of in this present and uncertain time, as the world lives with the pain and the anxiety caused by the spread of the coronavirus. In the midst of our need, God's Spirit is with us. And God's Spirit is able as we heard last week, to weave beauty out of brokenness. My name is Simon and I am one of the ministers of South Street Baptist Church in Exeter and Brantford Speak Baptist Chapel and we are recording this Sunday service from our home. It's wonderful to have you with us. We welcome you here today. And we pray that you will know the nearness and the reassurance of God's Spirit as we gather. We come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Compassionate God in a world which is broken, in communities which are fearful, with lives that wound and are wounded, we turn to you for forgiveness and healing. As we open our hearts to you, send your spirit of grace and truth upon us, that we may take refuge in your love as we listen to your word. May we find hope, and as we stretch out our hands to you, may we find peace. Amen. We're going to hear a reading from the Bible now, from John chapter 14. Jesus is in the last week of his life on this earth, and he has gathered with his disciples for a last meal together. As part of that meal, Jesus has told them that he will soon be leaving them. And as you can imagine, the disciples are deeply upset by this news, scared by this news. We take up the story at John chapter 14 and our reader is David Harrison. Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, reading from verses 1 to 7. It's entitled, Jesus, the Way to the Father. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would have I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Amen. Thank you, David, for that reading in which Jesus reassures his followers with words of hope, words that speak of God's care for them. We're going to sing of God's care for us now in a hymn that reminds us that we can rest in the loving presence of God as we place ourselves and our loved ones in the hands of God. Father, I place into your hands. Father, I place into your hands the things that I can do. Father, I place into your hands the time that I Thank you. 
place ourselves within God's loving care. We're going to continue in prayer now uh, and our prayer takes the theme that we heard from John chapter 14 of Jesus as the way, the truth and the life. Let's come to God in prayer. Jesus our friend and saviour, you walked the path of love and mercy and call us to follow where you lead. Lord Jesus, you are the way. You did not seek glory or power, but serve the poor and the needy. Lord Jesus, you are the way. In story and in action, you showed the compassion of God. Your life tells us what God is like. Lord Jesus, you are the truth. You teach us how to love God and each other. Your words are the rock on which we build. Lord Jesus, you are the truth. You took bread and fed the hungry. You reached out your hand and healed the sick. Lord Jesus, you are the life. And on the cross you died to bring us peace, rising again to be our living friend. Lord Jesus, you are the life. Loving Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads us into hope. You are the truth that reveals us God. You are the life that strengthens us always. Jesus, Son of God, we worship you. Last week in our service, we were privileged to include as one of our readers, our oldest church member, and this week, to lead the Lord's Prayer for us, we are going to include one of our youngest members in our church family. This week, our Lord's Prayer is led for us by Eliza. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us who sins and we forgive those who sin against us. Lead not, us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory and yours now from ever and ever. Amen. We're going to go back to the story in John chapter 14 now. We heard earlier how frightened the disciples were when Jesus had told them that he was leaving them and Jesus seeks to reassure them with a promise that, that he'll always be with them. Jesus now takes that promise further as he promises how he will be with them and continue to help them. Our reader for this second reading is Mary Ellis. And as well as reading for us now, Mary will have played some of the hymns that will have featured in our Sunday broadcast over these last few weeks. This reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 14, where Jesus is talking to his disciples after washing their feet and having supper with them. 
I'm starting at verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who have walked up the steep hill that is South Street in Exeter will know that along it there are a number of cafes and restaurants. And for many years, one of our personal favourites there was the Spanish restaurant El Bocado that was just a few doors down from South Street Baptist Church. We'd go there as a family for uh, birthdays and other treats. And one of our favourite meals there would be a chicken and chorizo paella, uh, a lovely rich rice and meat dish that is cooked and served in one special pan, known simply as a paella pan. Don, the owner of the restaurant, became a good friend to us and we were saddened when uh, the restaurant had to close, sad for Don, but also sad because we were not going to have any more paella. And then one day Don surprised us by turning up at our door and gave us our very own paella pan so that uh, we could then have paella any time we wanted here in our own home. Uh, and the paella pan may well get used this coming weekend. Here in John 14, Jesus is talking with a bunch of very sad disciples. He's told them that he's going to be leaving them. They've been on the road together for many, many months. But now Jesus tells them that, that where he's going next, they cannot go with him. The time they shared is coming to an end. And at this news, of course, the friends of Jesus are very sad, as we heard. They're frightened. They're anxious. They're confused. They're full of questions. How will they manage when Jesus has gone? What way will they travel when Jesus is no longer with them? But just as my friend gave me another paella pan so that we could continue in to enjoy that meal, in our own home. So Jesus promises to his disciples that he will send to them another one, another helper who will be as Jesus to them. They will not feel lost, Jesus promises. He says this in John chapter 14 and verse 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. The phrase another advocate, that word another, suggests that this will be another helper alongside them, just like Jesus. The new helper will encourage them and teach them and guide them and strengthen them, just as Jesus has been with them to do those things. Jesus is saying you don't need to be afraid because God is still going to be with you, although God will be with you now in a different way. Trust God, Jesus is saying. Don't be afraid, don't be anxious. Trust God, Jesus says. God is not going to abandon you. God is not going to leave you like orphans. You won't be on your own, Jesus promises. And this good news that Jesus gives these worried and anxious disciples 
just keeps getting better. The another helper that God will send them will not be with them for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years even. Jesus promises that this another helper will be with them forever, will be with them always. The Spirit God is sending to them will be with them forever. It's a promise that only, of course, God can make, because only God is eternal. By the Spirit, God is promising to be always with us, always alongside us. Jesus is saying that we don't need to face any situation on our own. We don't need to cope alone. We don't need to try and follow Jesus alone. We don't have to be strong on our own. God is giving us the Holy Spirit to be there with us, to be the presence of God with us at all times and in all places. To be there to help us live the kind of life that Jesus has shown us, one that is caring, one that is just, one that is unselfish, one that is loving one that is God-centred. A few weeks ago in our service broadcast, we spoke about how confusing it can be in life, and particularly at the present time when we are surrounded by so many different voices. And we asked the question of, of which voice do we trust? Which voice do we listen to? Jesus tells us that the spirit who he is sending is the spirit of truth. The spirit will be a voice that will not deceive us or mislead us. The spirit of God will speak with a voice that we can trust, that we can rely on, that we can follow. And this message that Jesus is giving them just keeps on getting even better. Yes, it's time for Jesus to leave them and return to the Father. But he says, I will still be there with you in the spirit of truth that I am sending to you. Jesus says in verse 18, I will not leave you on your own. I am coming to you. Jesus will die and rise again. As well here soon, he will ascend to be with the Father in heaven. But Jesus promises that he will still be with us by the Holy Spirit. The, the Spirit is the presence of Jesus with us in the here and the now. And that's a wonderful promise that Jesus makes to his disciples and that Jesus still makes to us now. We can know his presence with us through each day, through the Spirit of God being with us. We're going to think a bit more about how the Spirit of God helps us in a moment. We're going to pause to sing again now. At the beginning of this service, you heard a few bars of the lovely Sky Boat song. And we're going to sing a hymn that is set to that melody. It's a song that speaks of how Christ can strengthen and help us each day. Spirit of God, unseen as the wind.
those who are familiar with our setup in South Street Baptist Church, uh, they'll know that our background changes each week as we worship in the church. The, uh, the lovely banners that we have up will change each week and the flower arrangements will change too. Um, but sadly, uh, this room isn't big enough to have in the, uh, the banners or the flower arrangements. So each week we like to, um, to change the background behind me. Uh, and in a moment I'll explain why there's a, uh, there's a parrot behind me. We're looking today at verses from John chapter 14 and thinking about the promise of Jesus never to leave us or abandon us, but saying how after his death and resurrection, Jesus will send the Holy Spirit to help us. A few years ago, I went to a service with a friend where the preacher was, was preaching about the Holy Spirit. Uh, and when we came out afterwards, my friend told me they were rather bemused because having listened to the message, they were confused as to why they should be praying to the Holy Parakeet. Holy Parakeet, I thought. I don't remember that bit. And of course, the preacher had not, of course, been talking about a colourful bird that may or may not have been divine. He was not talking about the Holy Parakeet. He was talking about the Holy Paraclete. The word that is used in John chapter 14 in the Greek text for advocate or helper or comforter, it's translated in lots of ways, is the word parakletos, parakletos, hence how we get paraklete. And it's a Greek word that is almost impossible to translate into one English word. Uh, and in fact, one of the early church uh, fathers, when he was translating the Bible from the Greek, uh, in fact gave up and didn't even try to translate the word, so rich was its meaning. And he simply referred to the spirit as the paraclete in, uh, in this part of the gospel. The Greek word parakletos that Jesus here uses means literally to be alongside speaking for us. And it's why my version of the Bible speaks um, of the parakletos as being an advocate. It's the word that was used in the law court to describe the, uh, the lawyer who stood next to you, stood close to you by your side and spoke up for you in court. It was used in that technical way. I remember a few years ago, uh, as part of the job I had with Churches Together in Devon, I, I was asked to take part in a really big event in Exeter Cathedral. Hundreds and hundreds of people were there and I'm quite shy uh, and so I was quite nervous when I was told that I'd have to do a presentation as part of this really big gathering. Uh, what got me through it was that I didn't have to do the presentation on my own. But I was asked to do the presentation with a colleague, a friend, who I really trusted. And we went onto the stage side by side and we spoke together. And that sense of being alongside each other encouraged me. Uh, through that, uh, for me, that difficult moment. Jesus is here promising that the Holy Spirit is going to be with us, alongside us, beside us in every situation to help us and to guide us. By the Spirit, Jesus is telling us that he will be there with us so that we can turn to him in any moment and seek his reassurance and seek his strength. We don't have to try to follow Jesus on our own. The Holy Spirit is going to be with us every step of the way. And because Jesus and the Spirit are one in the divine mystery that is the Trinity of God, one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, having the Spirit with us is like having Jesus himself with us. Jesus is present with us in the Spirit, alongside us. This word paraclete has a rich meaning. It can also mean comforter, one who comforts, one who comforts and consoles us when life is difficult. It can also mean one who helps us and encourages us, one who is there to give us strength. 
the gift of the Spirit to be with us is why Jesus can speak words of reassurance to his friends and assure them that they do not need to worry. They need not be afraid. God, by the Spirit, will be there with them always and forever. And as we heard last week from Ross, life was not going to be easy for these first disciples. There would be times of great difficulty. There would be times of sadness. There would be times of great challenge. Just as, to be honest, there are still today. But Jesus does not leave us to face them on our own. He reassures us that the presence of the Spirit of God is with us to comfort, to encourage, to help in each and every situation. And Ross spoke last week of how God can bring beauty out of brokenness. And this is how God does it, by being present with us by the Holy Spirit, working in and through our lives, consoling those who sorrow, bringing healing and encouraging reconciliation, helping us to show love, helping us to care for one another. In these days to come, may we know the nearness of Jesus in the Holy Spirit with us, that we may know that we are never on our own, but God walks with us each and every day. We're going to turn to God in prayer now. And our prayers for others and ourselves this week are led by Margaret Jackson. I invite you, if you wish, to share in a response as part of our intercessions today. When I pray, God of love, compassion and healing, please respond Help us to heal our broken world. Gracious God, as we continue to live in these difficult and perplexing times, we believe that you are with us, able to guide, to comfort, to strengthen and to encourage us. We pray for those whose important decisions govern the way in which the nations of the world move forward towards a more normal way of life again. God of love, compassion and healing, help us to heal our broken world. We pray for missionary personnel serving overseas preparing for and perhaps already dealing with the outbreak of coronavirus, often with very limited resources and unsophisticated equipment. Be with their families far away in their home countries. God of love, compassion and healing, help us to heal our broken world. We thank you, Lord, for your love, not always acknowledged, which has continued to flow through the thousands of volunteers who have reached out to neighbours, the lonely, the isolated, the vulnerable, to offer help in so many different ways. God of love, compassion and healing, Help us to heal our broken world. We thank you, Lord, for the way in which so many people have become more aware of the beauty and magnificence of your creation during this period of lockdown. The birdsong, the spring flowers, the trees coming into life, but we pray for those who are unable to enjoy even a small garden or a local park and those who are finding family relationships very difficult. God of love, compassion and healing, help us to heal our broken world. We pray for all who are returning to work 
under the new guidelines. God of love, compassion and healing, help us to heal our broken world. For hospital chaplains and clergy worldwide of every denomination, revising their care plans and continuing to exercise their ministries among their congregations and in the wider community. God of love, compassion and healing, help us to heal our broken world. And finally, we pray for ourselves, our loved ones, and especially any we know who are in great need at this time. God of love and compassion, help us to heal our broken world. We offer these prayers and all our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Margaret, for our prayers. And a thank you also to our readers today, David and Mary, and to Eliza also for leading the Lord's Prayer for us. And thank you to you for being with us today. Thank you for joining with us for this service. And we hope and pray that you've known the nearness of God's Holy Spirit as we've worshipped together. And our prayer is that you go as you go into this week, you will know Jesus by the Spirit walking with you each day and each night. We're going to close our service with a really well-known hymn that I, I hope you'll really enjoy singing. It's a hymn that reminds us that God pilgrims with us through this life to help us and to strengthen us. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. close our service we're going to hear some of the words that Jesus speaks later in John chapter 14 where he's reassuring again his disciples that he's not going to abandon them or leave them on their own but send his Holy Spirit to strengthen them, encourage them, console them and comfort them. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. 
I do not give it as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. And so may the peace of God, that peace which we cannot always explain, but that the world can never exhaust. May the peace of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us and those we love, now and for ever. Amen. Thank you.